Okay. Okay, that's where it starts. Okay. Make sure I know where to start. I think we're alive. Yeah, we're alive. Alright, so yeah, I'm back. So we are staying on by the league, but now we're doing another mode. It's boss service. So basically, this is just a line clear mode. Got the entire stack below a white line that appears on the screen. And this is just you against the blocks. Don't need, don't need to worry about any AI or anything like that. You know, yep. this is basically you just play fast. Yeah, and this is the only. Um, I, correct me if I'm wrong. This is the only line clear mode in any game that does both two and three D. Uh, yes. Well. Calipong and GameCube also has that, but they oh, they have it as separate options. Yeah, this is the one. This is the only one that has them both in the same mode. Yeah. Give, give the give the people a surprise when they get there. Oh, all right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. Well, you'll you'll still be surprised because this. I mean, yeah, but yeah. Let's go ahead. All right, here we go. Start in three, two, one, go. So, so the lore of spa service is that Team Rocket has started started a spa service. So, uh, in one of their masterful disguises, and they are going to capture people's Pokemon when they drop them off at the spa. And I'm not quite sure why they dress up in all these different costumes all throughout but gameplay wise uh you can see that there's a little dotted line on the screen and you have to lower your entire stack you have to keep clearing blocks until you get beneath that line and as you progress throughout the stage uh you have to clear more and more blocks and the stack speed or the stack speed will get faster and faster uh, not that that really matters to like a high-end player, because they're going to be clearing so many blocks and chaining, and uh, yeah. the stack's really not going to be raising unless you want it to. Basically, the name of the game is Clear. Keep clearing. Just yeah. keep clearing. You never want to stop in this yeah. mode. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's where the cursor speed and the board vision really helps. You need the board vision. And what I mean by board vision is uh, seeing, uh, look, uh, looking at the board and being able to see clears uh, quickly. Uh, that's what you, and then the cursor speed is obviously how fast you mirror your cursor. So you need both of those skills at fairly high. Um, you, need, you need them pretty, pretty high in order to be able to clear these modes in the types of speeds that. Uh, you will see uh, FFR Pro clearing uh, clearing these modes. That uh, we start off with five colors. Eventually, I, I believe after at the halfway point, uh, we'll move up to six. If I, if I recall correctly. Nope, we stay at five. Oh, okay. So this is the one game that bumps to ten. Well, the special state is that we will see use a six. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, the reason why I said that is because in Pokemon Puzzle Challenge, uh, I believe cool. the stage clear mode actually does that. Uh, after the halfway point, you do go on the six. If I'm, but I could be wrong. Yeah, and the stage with that type of attack on the bond to do the same thing. Okay. Anyways, yeah, you're basically just this is just to sit back and watch and. Uh, you'll just see uh, FFR Pro clearing until uh, raising attack until it gets all the way to right below the top, and then from there, clearing as much as he can, raising his, and then raising his stack until he sees the line, maybe a couple of lines uh, below that, and then clear all the way until you get to the bottom, like you saw there. And uh, like uh, Tayman said, he. Uh, the rate at which the panels will uh, rise, uh, which is called the speed level, 
um, will increase over the course of the entire spot service. Until, uh, until you get to, I think at the end you'll eventually be at like, what, 40, 50 speed, somewhere around there? Yeah, you, last stage, you start at skill 45. Yeah. Except for one stage, which is the special stage, which I believe is 50 speed, right? No, that's all the 45. Oh, okay. It's just really, really fast. Uh, that's uh, one. There's one. There's one exception to that stage, which we'll talk about when we get there. We're ready whenever you are. I. By the way, that two two was. <laughs> nice gold there. Nice gold. So, hey, okay. hey, hey. Yeah, the, re the reason why he goes through all that fanfare is because uh, for FFR Pro, holds in, uh, in this game and I think any puzzly game are very, very few and far between. Yes. Right? Oh, yeah. Well, because it's not like, it's, it's a matter of luck, basically. Yeah, yeah like, um, I think uh, Tate's one gold that he had in P uh, PPL is probably the first you had in ages, right? Yeah, for, for sure. There's, there's one on Rocket that was 11 seconds. Yeah. Uh, for me, uh, golds are, are, for me, rainbows. Uh, I have rainbows with enabled, so I have rainbows for me. They're a bit more common than the uh, FFR and Tay. Uh, and like Pokemon Puzzle Challenge, for example, they're actually pretty rare still uh, on uh, some of the. Uh, Categories that I've played more, like intense. I haven't gotten an intense gold in three or four months, so getting one gets you all hyped up. Yeah, you'll, you'll get all of your golds out of the way when you start running it, and as you keep getting lower and lower times on stages, and then eventually, like. Because it's not a it's not a matter of like executing a, a certain section of a level in a traditional speed run better. It's just like a matter of getting good luck past a certain point. Yeah, and uh, there's also another thing that happens, and that is eventually you'll find that your sum of best is like, you don't even need to pay attention to it because it's so far below what's humanly possible that uh, you shouldn't even pay attention to it. It's like, basically these games break some of that yeah. measurements. Right. I always compare against average. Yeah, uh, for example, uh, I believe Tay's some of that is um, as hard as like a 906. Right around there. Yeah, and my sum of best on the category I'm running next, uh, V-Hard, is like 25 minutes below my PB. It's like an 18.58. And my PB is a 43.56. Yeah, it's totally bonkers. Yeah, uh, basically, the reason, uh, the reason why is that, like that, is because of the high amount of variance. Like, that's the, that's the explanation for, it, uh, basically the further apart your PB and your, um, your PB and your summon best is, the more variance the game has, generally. It's not always the case, but most of the time it is. Anyways, you're starting to see now that stages uh, you're starting to have to clear a ton of blocks, you're having to raise multiple times, you're having to do a lot more in order to clear these stages, and that's just going to keep on being the case. Uh, you'll, you'll notice, uh, like, three, like, the first stage in a set of levels is, like, pretty tame. It's short, uh, but then when you get to, like, this, the midway point, you'll start noticing that the stack will be higher at the start, and you'll have to clear more and more. And then when you get to the last stage, the stack will be really high, and you have to clear a ton more. 
that's a that's the general way that the these levels progress is starts off kind of small with a short stack and then it goes higher and more and then higher and more as you go on and then again correct me if i'm wrong but i'm pretty sure that's how it works yeah, that's generally what happens yeah and again there's an exception with the special stage right. which go. we'll get into again when it happens i'm not sure when it happens in this game I would assume this uh, game does have the iconic special stage, right? Yeah, it looks like. does have it. The special stage that you're allowed to watch on the same as well, uh, but this is a special stage that you get half, roughly halfway through a mode that just comes out of nowhere. A hey, Tetris attack that scared me as a kid. Yeah, because you thought you had to win, right? Just, it's, it's a little intimidating. Bowser has this roar, interrupts your game. And, uh, he also has an HP bar. I, uh, this is a special stage. We'll, we'll get there. It's Butch and Cassidy, named yes. after Butch and Cassidy. Yeah, so, there you go. There's you don't have to beat stage. it. You don't, yeah. It, it, you do not have to beat it. In fact, in a speedrun sense, uh, you do not. You just want to lose immediately because this is fast. And now, we're in 3D mode. The surprise is that there actually is a 3D mode. Not, I mean, not, not really if you've played this game before, but this is where this specific speedrun takes a turn for, like, the mind-bending mind-blowing type of speed that you're gonna see. Like, you're gonna have to deal with the 362 now, instead of just a 2... a 2D plane. And in order to complete a stage now, you have to do it around the entire 2. Prepare to battle. So these stages end up taking... Uh, I would say... Long, could end up taking considerably longer for a new player than the pr previous uh, three. So, yeah, this is a curveball this game throws at you, and this is where you're just gonna see the mind-blowing speed, uh, clearing speed. Uh, you'll be intimidated when you first see 3D mode, by the way, uh, cause you're like, wait, 3D mode? And you'll just see the amount of work you have to do, and you'll be like, oh crap. And uh, like like was stated earlier, this is the only game in the series where both 2D and 3D mode are part of the same uh, line clear, stage clear type game mode, where in future games they're separated. It's, you can choose either 2D or 3D. But yeah, you're just seeing why FFR Pro is so good at these at these uh, stage clearings is just the sheer speed. Uh, the one thing you need to watch out for in this mode is you have to be cognizant of the entire tube. You, uh, as you can see, you can see the other side of the tube in the background. You'll you, that's where you have to. Be careful, because if you have uneven stacks and you don't notice it, you could kill yourself very easily by raising until you raise all the way to the top and kill yourself that way. So that's the major hurdle you have in 3D I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sure if uh, you guys would agree with that, but that, that's what I always. Um, Found to be true in this mode. I don't know. It's a little in in intimidating because sometimes you just get so many more blocks to focus yeah. on. And there's also 
you also have to be cognizant of the entire tube, including the stuff in the background. And like I said, uh, it's just an easy way for you to lose a run or lose a, mar a good marathon run and chip if, if you don't pay attention to what to what you see in the background. Okay, you can, you, it, you can, can just do. raise yourself and die. But so far, just masterful play. Uh, this is what you want, this is what you like to see. I'm, I'm not sure how, uh, what kind of pace uh, Empathar is on, but it seems like a pretty good pace. And we are on 24 pace. 24 pace, that's very, very good. The estimate is 30 minutes. Yeah, I wish uh, my cursor speed could be this fast. Yeah. Uh, I'd say um, my cursor speed is obviously the slowest out of the three of us, but I'd still say my cursor speed is still pretty good for where I am, mm -hmm. skill wise. Uh, it's something I uh, it's something I work on uh, w when I play in marathon mode, uh, 3D marathon mode. I actually take the time to uh, mo uh, move every single panel to fill every single hole, just to uh, practice the uh, cursor speed. That's just the way I do it. Uh, anyways, uh, Team Rocket does have some very, very, very weird costumes in this game. Uh, I believe James wore a tutu in stage 3, if I'm not mistaken. And then they're both dressed as, I believe these are Gisha costumes. So some rather insensitive costumes they're wearing. Yeah, uh, but yeah, like James and Two Do, for example. Not sure they, not sure they wanted uh, that. That was a good choice, but I guess they did it for the entertainment factor. That, like we're talking like, uh, I think we're talking like late '90s right now, right? That's when the anime was going. This game came out in 2000. Yeah, but I mean, uh, this is. Ma ma majorly based off the anime, and in the anime, uh, James was known to dress up in right. like, dresses and stuff as well. Like it's it's not a, it's not a novel concept. It's what he used to do as well, and uh, Jesse would actually insist on it on some occasions. There was that episode that was banned in the U.S. Uh, featuring content that we're, we're not going to talk about. Yeah, and there was actually another. Uh, there was one that was banned in Japan. Uh, it was the tent. It was the one where the tentacle attacking the building. All right. I uh, remember the, that episode where they attacked the buildings. Like they came out of the scene and attacked the, uh, the buildings. They thought it was too much like a tsunami or something like that, and they banned it in Japan. I was not aware of that, actually. I think I know the one you're talking about. Yeah, it's, it's the one where all the tentacles come out in an attack. Yeah, that one got banned in Japan because, uh, because basically for the reason I said. But yeah, uh, it's the only such episode that I know of that got banned in Japan and not the United States. But, but yeah, so the reason why we're talking about the anime is the anime, like, you see an anime uh, references all over this game. Like, Jigglypuff with a microphone, for example, as the stop timer in this mode. Jigglypuff always had that, always showed up in the anime and drew over all their faces whenever Ash and Company fell asleep. I... I mean, I assume that's the case, and that would be the case with this chicken club. And then Jesse James Meow, like the regular, like they've been in every anime since the beginning. I'm pretty sure they've been in every anime and every movie.
We're ready whenever you are. Oh uh, yeah, uh, uh, the in-game time- one thing to note, the in-game timer in the upper left never gets reset throughout the entire run, I believe, unless you- if, if you die, does it get reset? No. Yeah, so it never gets reset, so that's one way to tell, uh, although the in-game timer does run quite a bit slower than RT. But it's one way to tell- you can- it's one thing you can use to tell how good of a pace you are on. If you're able to do math and figure out exactly what RTA that is. Or you can just look at your splits. I mean, you're just wrecking these stages. So far. So far. Now with stage six, uh, the gig is up. It's actually been two rockets the entire time. Holy cow. Like, it's a total mind blowing moment to this camera. It's a bamboozle potential. Yeah. Uh, this is the stage where um, I've always found the last stage of stage clear mode in all games to actually be somewhat difficult because uh, uh, the high uh, curse, the high uh, panel uh, speed, uh, panel rate, speed rate, the speed level. Uh, I've always, I mean, for me, I've found it a little easier because it goes faster and I don't have, mm -hmm. I'm not trying to play faster than the game will allow. Yeah. yeah but, but, but I mean, uh, but I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm talking like Texas Attack, uh, that one, I believe he starts stage six uh, around in the mid thirties and speed level in that game is much more severe than this game, I think. Oh yeah, I agree. Uh, it's the one stage clear mode that took me three times to beat. All the other ones I was, I've was i been able to beat first try. But that was the one that actually took me three tries. Anyways, uh, this... Uh, this goes, uh, basically, uh, in case you haven't figured out, uh, how can anyone be this fast? Um, practice. That's literally the answer to everything with Puzzle League, is the more you practice, the better you get. Let's see what you can do. Uh, the more you play, the better you get, I should say. Like, that's generally... Eh. Uh, like, uh, all three of us have played the, this series of games for over a decade, or two in some cases. Right? Oh, sorry, say that again? Uh, mo uh, all three of us have played this series of games for over a decade, if not two, right? Yeah, I played uh, Tetris Attack when I was five. It's like a little... Usually you see speedrunners, they play this game when they are they were a kid and they want to get into actually speedrunning it. You, you don't as often see people playing it for the very first time or early on trying to speedrun it because it just, it takes so long to like, get up to speed. Unless they yeah. really they want to, they enjoy it and they, play, and they want yeah. to play it and they want to learn. And they want to put in the time. Uh, so let me tell you, uh, when I first started playing, uh, it took me maybe a week of playing to be able to get my first free chain. And then it took me maybe a month to get my first five chain. And now I get, now my highest chain on the game I play the most, Coco Muggle Challenge, is a 13 on, uh, without garbage and a 27 with garbage. Dang. Yeah, so it basically, uh, it's, and that's just to show that if you play a game long enough, you can break some pretty insane, 
uh, some pretty insane boundaries that this uh, that you never battle. thought would be broken. Like for example, uh, Siuga, who's another uh, member of our community. Uh, I'm not sure if this was recently, but he fairly recently got the first sub seven in Panel de Pond su uh, super hard. And, um, like, in the, I'd say in the past two years, more world records in these games have been broken than probably any other time in history. I think you guys would agree with that, right? Oh, well, you know, Yoshi took down a lot of categories. And, and before him, cards, like, cards spent, like, half a year to a year going through and getting the world record in every single Pokemon Puzzle Challenge versus mode category, and then Yoshi, like, six months later, uh, Yoshi Mitsu, another member, uh, just went through maybe half a year ago and took all, all of them except easy. Oh, so, did he get, get intense, too? Yep, he got oh, intense. Wow. That is he, ridiculous. Sub-14 sub intense. Alright, last stage. Yep, so this stage is against Giovanni, and this is a stage where you have to get chains and combos only to deal damage to the health bar on your left. Um, it is actually not Japanese runners. I don't think it's... Well, I mean, it, there are a bunch of Japanese runners now that I think about it. I shouldn't be saying that, but they don't really speedrun the game. There's only a few that speedrun the game. There's a lot that play competitively, though. And there's time for this. Uh, yeah. Um, Tetris, uh, te uh, panel, uh, Puzzle League in Japan, mo most most Japanese players play it competitively. They don't play it speedrunning. I, I think you guys would agree, right? I know there's a, a bigger Japanese scene for Tetris. Yes. Yes, uh, but uh, oh, like uh, the top players, like Kusan and um, uh, Muhi and Suzumi, they don't really speed run. They just play competitively. Although Suzumi and Muhi have uh, done panel de pond runs that cards at it, but that's neither here in between. Also, a nice sub twenty five. Nice. Yeah, that, was, that was a really good performance. And you, you got the key to the city. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, up next, we have the final run, the second to last run, which is um, going to be Nintendo Puzzle Collection Panel de Pong. Uh, B Hard. And I'm going to be doing that for you, and this is going to be the run that's going to be very... This is a challenging run. So I hope you're all ready for that. 